Welcome to another Waters Ironworks. We are finishing up part two of the safety video. Less fire in this one, unfortunately, but still good information. Safety is always critically important. Let's talk about some tool safety and some of the major things that you may run into most commonly as a blacksmith. The first one is loose hammer heads. This one still feels pretty tight actually, but if you start seeing some wiggle in your hammer head, you're gonna wanna rehandle that make sure it's safe. The reason we pulled this one and we've set it aside in the back of the shop where none of our students can use it is we are actually missing the wedge in it. There is no longer that extra bit of material pushing the wood to the outside of the eyes, keeping this hammerhead on there securely. This hammer is no longer safe. As soon as we see something like this happens, we put it in the back of the shop where nobody's gonna access it and we make sure uh, that we get it repaired before it comes back out to the front of the shop. We have had, when we didn't notice the hammerhead was loose, somebody working and a head go flying across the shop. That is a danger to the person swinging the hammer. It's a danger to everyone around them. It is something that we try and take very important. Anything like this has got to be removed until you can get it fixed. The next item is mushroomed tools. So when you make a tool, like this little chisel right here. You're gonna come in, you're gonna chamfer the end, you're gonna have it nice and squared up, and then you're gonna to go to use that tool, and you're gonna hammer on it with a brass hammer or a softened uh, steel hammer. But as you hammer on this, every one of those blows is going to spread the end of this material out. And over time, let's see if we can get a video. This is a relatively new tool. That head is uh, struck end is in good shape. Everything's looking okay with that. As you work on that, it's gonna start looking like this. You can see that end is starting to come out, hang over, starting to mushroom. This is where it starts being a danger. You start getting cracks in there, these little pieces start flying off. And you wind up, hopefully you can see that on the camera here. This one has actually had some pieces of it start flying off and that head is really starting to mushroom out. This needs to be fixed, addressed. We'll put a video out at some point um, on how to fix this, but you need to take it to the grinder, grind that off, put a new chamfer back on it basically. Um, I tried to find some really egregious examples of this, but we do a pretty good job in the shop. Anytime we start seeing tools get into this sort of shape of going in and cleaning them up, it is part of the necessary maintenance and blacksmithing. It takes just a few minutes um, and can really make things a lot safer. The danger here is as this mushrooms out, you get these bits breaking off. They can go flying up into your eye and to other places that you don't want it. If you're not wearing your eye protection, you're not wearing your apron, you're blacksmithing uh, with no shirt on, you go, you're hitting hard steel to hard steel, could be a real risk. So keep things safe. Clean it up. Anytime you start getting really even to this level, this one needs to go back. We're starting to see some cracks right in there. Um, need to clean this up. The next key part of shop safety is how to start up and shut down a forge safely, regardless of whether or not you're working with coal, charcoal, propane, I guess even induction forges and stuff like that, although I don't have a lot of experience with them. Um, you want to make sure that you know how to get your fire going and turn it back off in a way that's safe. Uh, we'll link to some videos, snippets of me starting up a coal forge and of me starting up and shutting down my propane forge somewhere here so that you can see those. I don't have a video on starting a charcoal coal, uh, a charcoal forge. It is going to be very similar to the coal forge getting it started and going. The big difference on a charcoal forge is when you're shutting it down Charcoal will continue to burn in a way that coal won't. A coal forge, it'll go out on its own eventually. Coal needs forced air going through it in order to keep, um, keep burning. So as long as you knock down all the major flames, spread that out, it's going to go out for you. Charcoal, you really want to make sure that all the fire is out, that you're not leaving something that potentially is going to reignite and start burning when you're no longer around it. If you are dealing with a coke forge instead of a coal forge, and I'll find a video on how to start a uh, coke fire. I don't 
have any coke forges. They are very similar to coal, except harder to get going and harder to keep lit. They're something you really need uh, an electric blower on if you're gonna be running coke. A lot of times with the coke forge, in order to get it started up, you're gonna wanna do a small wood fire, get that going, put the coke around it, that'll catch the coke on fire and you're ready to go. Like coal, a coke forge, you pull it apart, make sure you don't have a lot of open flames and you're gonna be um, good to go. And I'll find some videos and I'll drop them in the description so that you can see how to start those different types of fires. That's the basic starting and stopping of a forge. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Final section of the level one safety discussion. Level two and level three of this program also have safety as we start looking at more shop safety and things like that. But the final bit, safety, is safety changes depending on where you are. It's an important thing to keep in mind. I've got a set of shop rules that I enforce here at Pioneer Farms that not everybody else is gonna enforce. So if you are going to a forge other than your own, you wanna check with them and see what shop rules they have. A lot of places, I know California, for example, their Blacksmithing Association has an excellent write-up of their shop safety rules. I'll put a link to that in the description so that you can see it. But talk to whoever has you coming out to their forge about what their safety instructions are, what their practices are, and follow those. These people are kind enough to have you come in into their shop. They want to stay safe. They want to keep you safe. Make sure that you understand what's expected of you to be safe in their shop. Read through those, ask questions if you've got them, especially if you're traveling to events and things like that. Make sure you're not gonna do something that is gonna be unsafe for yourself or anybody else at risk. Always find out what those local safety guidelines are. And that takes us through the level one safety discussion for the Bana National Curriculum. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully this was useful. I know it's a long topic, but it is an important topic. And I'm glad that we spent some time looking into all the different areas of safety. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon.